Yeah, I think in fintech, I think what's happening is one more and more fintechs are having to move upstream and the reason for that is if you've been a fintech that's been around for a few years now right you're past your let's say your series a and your series b um and you're either angling for an ipo or acquisition or obviously it's a huge next step in your growth and i, I alluded to this at the beginning is you have to grow true share of wallet right it, it can't come from just like the number of free accounts that people have but actually like where are the dollars being made amongst your customers and those tend to be customers with larger portfolios, larger wallets, are either paying for a more premium service. But those people, the more affluent you get, right, whether you're someone who's saving or spending or you're investing, whatever your fintech proposition might be, we're now talking about people who have more wealth in some capacity. And if you are a wealthy person or you are wealthy or you're someone who's coming into more and more wealth just because you've been earning for a longer period of time, um you want to know that your finances are in a good place right like for example for you this is a personal question but like where do you bank uh, I, I bank at royal bank of canada okay I'm canada. um have you ever been tempted to try out like a challenger bank or like a neo bank or like some upstart bank that doesn't have like a branch down the street uh, i was with uh well tangerine used to be ing direct uh -huh. for a little bit uh -huh. and then i've yeah. done some uh hopefully nobody just like starts cracking on my password and then <laughs> had like a like a like a well simple account to be like okay let's see how this right. goes and then i invest with a, a financial advisor right right so you're probably you're someone who's in the now and if i ask my team my team is largely like people who are younger in their 20s like when i go around the room and i say who do you bank with wells fargo bank of america and i say you we are like avid supporters of fintech but yet everybody is still working with the bank of america's and the wells fargo's of the world and why is that there is still a trust factor that you have that there is an institution where you put your money and when like <laughs> If we are facing a zombie apocalypse, there is some comfort in knowing I can maybe head to the branch and still get my money out versus it being online somewhere that you can't see. And that's just like a human instinct, right? It's this idea that like it's somewhere safe. As a result, I think fintechs are trying to create that safety for their customers. You're actually seeing more of that with people opening up branches or offices that people can walk into. And I think you see that not just in fintech, but overall, like online, traditional online providers opening up physical space because of physicality is what creates comfort that there's a there's a place that I can go to. And so more and more fintechs are now starting to look a bit more like the traditional financial institution with offices, humans that you can talk to, speaking a more mature language than what was originally five years ago all about like you know we are you know we're fighting the financial services industry now it's actually now we're safe we can work with you whether you're 20 or 30 40 50 they're going for the retirees um so that's really starting to change how these fintechs are marketing themselves